In this video, we're going to go over the basics of what are called uniform motion problems. Now, when you actually get in the car and you start driving, you know there's acceleration, the speed varies approximately. We're going to call them uniform motion problems because we're going to assume the rate um, has an average speed. So that's the point of using the word uniform motion problem. So we have a rate which we often might refer to as miles per hour, let's say if you're driving. And there's a time, that would be how long you're driving for, so maybe like three hours or three and a half hours. And the distance is how many miles you might go. All right, so first of all, we often just write rate as R, T is time, and D is distance. You could use capital letters if you'd like, but basically rate times time equals distance. And you use this formula without realizing it, I'm sure. So the question is, what if somebody had said, how far would you go if you drove three hours at an average of 40 miles per hour? Okay? So what do you think you would get? I imagine most of you would hopefully get 120 miles. And that's because you're going to take the rate, which is 40. You know, really that means miles per hour. So it's like the miles is in the numerator and the hours is in the denominator. When you say miles per hour, that's what it really means. Times, how long you drive for your time, is three hours. So we have hours in the numerator. And notice that the hours, it cancels just like if it was an X and an X canceling. So you would have 40 times 3 under 120 miles. So that would be an application. All right, what we're going to do is take some word problems and try to get a picture. We're not going to solve them yet. We're going to get a picture of what's going on. Here's a word problem. Two cyclists start at the same corner and ride in opposite directions. One cyclist rides twice as fast as the other. In three hours, they're 81 miles apart. Find the rate of each cyclist. I'm not going to worry about how fast they're going, their rates, variables, etc. I'm just going to get a picture of what's going on. We have two cyclists. One's going faster than the other, and they're going in opposite directions. So basically, you have a picture like this. Right? So here's their starting point, there's their end point, and I'm going to put at the end, like, let's say this is where cyclist 1 ends up, and here's where cyclist 2 ends up. And the total length, which would be the distance, would be 81 in this case. So if I knew how long the short piece was, and I knew how long the long piece was, hopefully you can see that you would add them together to get 81. Here's another word problem. The jogger started running at an average speed of 6 miles an hour. Half an hour later, another runner started running after him, starting from the same place, and, it, it was, and that jogger was averaging 7 miles per hour. How long will it take for the runner to catch up? Okay, let's get the picture. We've got the jogger. He's running. He's going along. And then later, don't worry about how much later, but eventually, the uh, runner comes and catches up to him. So that's where the jogger ends, and that's where the runner ends, and you should be able to see that the length that they both travel, so their distances are going to be the same. So that's the picture. The picture is just the distance. We're looking at the distances. Here's another one. A 555-mile, five-hour trip on the Autobahn was driven at two speeds. The average speed of the car was 105 miles per hour on the first part of the trip, and the average speed was 115 miles per hour for the second part. How long did the car drive at each speed? Okay, now this doesn't say it's half at 105 and half at 115. It just means there's a first and a second part, and I don't really know which is longer. But the picture is it's going for a while, and then... The speed changes, and it's going 
some more. I really don't know which of these is longer, but I do know that altogether, that's 555 miles. So that would be the picture. Here's yet another one. Andy and Beth are at opposite ends of an 18 mile country road with plans to leave at the same time running toward each other to meet. Andy runs seven miles per hour while Beth runs five miles per hour. How long after they begin will they meet? Well, they're away from each other, right? So they're apart from each other and they start running toward each other and eventually they meet. So let's say that's Andy. It's going a little bit faster than Beth. And I know that this total distance is going to be 18 miles. So if we knew how long this line segment was and how long this one was, we know what we would add them together to get 18. Here's another one. A car and a bus set out at 2 p.m. from the same spot, headed in the same direction. The average speed of the car is twice the average speed of the bus. After two hours, the car is 68 miles ahead of the bus. Okay, this is yet another one. A car and a bus are leaving at the same time, same spot. So, eventually the car gets ahead. So there's the car. So that's the car. And, hmm, here's the bus. He doesn't get as far. But how far ahead is the car? Well, it's ahead by 68 miles. So I know that however far the bus went, plus this little piece of 68, 68 more miles, that would be the total distance the car went. Here's one last one we're going to go over. A pilot flew from one city to another city averaging 150 miles an hour. Later, it flew back to the first city, averaging 100 miles per hour. The total flying time was five hours. How far apart are the cities? Well, starts here and he goes somewhere, and then he comes back. And that's the picture. The distance is going to be the same. So, these were all a little bit different scenario, and the pictures are all a little bit differently. I'm just going to scroll so you can see it. So, here's this last one I did. Same distance. The one before that, the car got ahead of the bus. The one before that, we had two people running toward each other. The one before that, we went someplace, we went different speeds, so we sort of went for a while at one speed and then just continued on. Here's where two people leave and go to the same place, but one, one person left earlier, but in the end their distance was the same because one caught up to each other. And I think this was the first one. The two cyclists start at the same place and they go away from each other and they end up apart by 81 miles per hour. And all of these were uniform motion problems. So now let's just draw the different pictures we got. Okay, so these were the different scenarios. One is somebody leaves early and then eventually somebody else leaves and catches up. Okay, that's sort of like scenario, one scenario. One scenario is you go someplace and then you come back, right, to the same place. One is you start from the same place, one's going in opposite directions from the other person. So it adds up to some number. And the other one where they go toward each other and they end up meeting, let's say. That was a different scenario. So your scenario, this is sort of like scenario one, two, three, four. These are just different kind of pictures you might end up with. All right. Another one was where you went for a while at one speed and then changed speeds and just kept going. Ended up someplace. And the last one was where they left at the same time, but something got ahead of the other one, but we knew how far ahead they were. So basically, you're going to draw a picture. It's going to look like one of these that I have here. 
So those are the different scenarios, the different pictures you might get for most uniform motion problems. One of these pictures here. And I'm going to go over these particular problems on the next video. So we'll do them thoroughly, but we'll first start out with a picture, and then from there we'll define variables, put the lengths on the picture, and then by looking at the picture we'll be able to write an equation, solve, check, etc. Okay, so on to the next video.